E is a set of n distinct points. on the plane then uh, the distance set of E is defined as the Euclidean distance between any pair of points in E that Erdos asked is uh, what can we say about the number of distinct distances? Uh, so he asked the question based on this lattice example. So we have square root of n by square root of n lattice. Um, for this particular example, one can calculate that the number of distinct distances is roughly n divided by log n to one half. And then this problem is essentially solved by ghosts and cats. Um, showing that the number of distinct distance is at least n divided by log n. And today we are going to talk about a continuous solution of this problem. So are still are people still interested in getting getting the half there or not? Uh, I don't know. It seems hard. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, I I can comment that uh, I saw Ron Graham give uh, the prize money to Nets Cats, saying that as far as Erdosh would, uh, even though the half is missing, he, they, they still win the prize. Oh, <laughs> so if you saw for the other half, you will not get the price. <laughs> no, no, no. So they, he, he, he delivered the money. Ron Graham on behalf of Erdosh when they solved it. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, Faulkner distance conjecture is about let E in R B be a set of Hausdorff dimension S larger than D over 2. Then Faulkner conjecture that the uh, Lambic measure of the distance set is positive. So here, the same notation, this notation means the cardinality, and this means the Lambic measure. And so why do we have um, S larger than D over two? We, we can, uh, based on the, we can sort of think of the same example. Let delta um, Delta be a very small number, and then we can beacon those, uh, take a delta neighborhood of those lattice points, and we also rescale the lattice points such that the distance between two lattice points is roughly um, one over m, and here we take our set. E delta as the unit cube intersect Z over M and take the delta neighborhood of it.
So if we consider this example, and we can take, uh, say, to construct our fractal set, we can take a sequence of delta, and delta k goes to uh, zero very fast. So using this example, one can see that when s is smaller than d over 2, uh, this is impossible. To see this, uh, if x and y they are in, uh, in this set. set, then one can see that the norm of x minus the norm of y, if they're not the same, it at least 1 over m squared. So, So when s is smaller than uh, d over 2, this 1 over m square will be um, larger than delta. And so if this is the distance set, then we see that it's, it cannot fill in most of the interval. So this lattice example gives like gives the provides a sh sharp example for all the conjecture and also provides a sharp example for the Faulkner distance conjecture. Okay. So does this work for d equals? Uh, yeah. For d, d over, over two exactly or not? Uh, I would guess so. Okay. Yeah, can you explain again why why this saying that the Lapeg measure would be zero in in this case? Uh, because so in, imagine um, so imagine we have chopped the interval into uh, 1 over m uh, sub intervals. Then this side set, so in when s is smaller than d over 2, then 1 over m squared is smaller than delta, or larger than delta. Right. And this condition says that if two distances are not the same, then they are at least 1 over m square apart. So that means we cannot put two delta uh, distances inside one interval. And that's the reason why uh, the Lebesgue measure is, So imagine delta goes to 0. And that's why um, the Lebesgue measure is, uh, cannot be strictly positive. OK. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, now, uh, there are many methods to study the uh, Falkner distance problem, and today we are going to focus on a free analysis method. Can I, can I ask just a general question? So, 
Does this Faulkner distance problem come up naturally in, in other aspects of Fourier analysis? Or, I mean, you know, uh, so I'd just like to know what, whether it has some other motivation besides the obvious generalization of Burgess's question. Um, so I think uh, in uh, around, I think in the 90s or uh, around 2000, there are uh, well, Ken made a connection of that's cats. The cats and Tao made a connection for a uh, Faulkner distance conjecture on the plane, but for a uh, dimension as greater or equal to one, uh, to other several other conjectures like Rosenberg's conjecture. What's oh, so related to those things? And also Kakea conjecture. What's oh, so related to Kakea? Uh, in, but that's that's a little bit. Uh, that's for as greater or equal to one in R2. So it's slightly different from this setting. Oh, okay. So mu, let mu be the first, first measure of R7 E. Uh, Satisfy mu e equals to one, and also mu for any form of radius r, this is smaller than r to the s, where r is between zero and one. And we can define a measure mu x. This is our uh, x as mu this sigma t evaluated at x, but sigma t is the angular measure of a sphere of radius. So now you're assuming E as a positive HS measure? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So this new XT is now a measure supported on the pin distance set delta XT that is defined as for any point Y in E, you take the Euclidean distance from Y to X. can do is um, integral on g mu equals to mu x t dt. Um, maybe up to a constant sum that the here t is about one. So and then this is so since mu xt is supported on the pin distance set, so this is bounded by the Lovic measure of the pin distance set times the L2 norm. And so it's to show that the that has positive Lebesgue measure, it suffices to show that the L2 norm of mu x t is bounded. Sorry, that, I, I didn't quite catch the def What is the definition of the Frostman measure? It has to be probability measure and it has to obey that, and then, then what else? Is it, or is, or is this, that's just the definition there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For any, for any bulk? Uh, yes. Uh, so any any point at any point centered at any point on the knee. Uh, uh, not necessarily centered at a point in E, just any yeah. point. For any ball. It's uh, bounded by R yeah. to the X. Okay. And then then uh, th then the rest down here, this new uh, this U or new of X is I understand the definition, but so this is a, this is now a consequence of the 
or what is what are you saying here? Uh, I was just saying that if we want to show, uh, so we need if if we can show the L two node is bounded. This is a oh, okay. unknown yet. Then we can show the pin distance that has positive limit. Okay, okay. Good. And then we can say that the distance that has positive limit. Because the pin distance set is a subset of the distance set. And now our goal is to um, estimate the L2 node of new x and we rewrite it. This way. Yeah. Can you explain? I'm sorry, maybe it's a stupid question, but why the first inequality is true? The, the d mu to the no x this. This one? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, you can kind of so that's just the that's just the convolution or is it uh, so here, uh, this new x t is we kind of uh, measure the, the the size of the set with distance t to x, and if we integral on the t, then we we take all the other points in E, so that becomes t u. But, but just to be clear, yeah, you're trying to find a clever Frostman measure, right? Uh, no, the Frostman measure is given. Well, I, I, um, I mean, you're trying to give a lower bound through using the Frostman measure. Yes. If I understood from Tom's question, the Fro it's a Frostman measure, not the, uh, it's not some potential theoretic definition, right? Uh, yeah, there exists. Yes. The So you're looking for a frost. Are you looking for mu? Yeah. It's it's given. It's given. So there's a Frostman lemma says such measure exists, and we call this Frostman measure. But it, it's it's not unique. Uh, no. It, no. It, it, so, at so first we can find why it's fine. <laughs> Are you what? For any for any measure satisfying this, then we, we can keep going. Yes, way. I understand. But so mu is an auxiliary piece of your analysis. We're given, um, we're given the dimension is S. You want to give a lower bound for the different set. Uh, I'm just trying to understand the role of mu. Uh, is mu something you're going to choose cleverly eventually or not? No. It, all the properties we need is here. And no matter what, how you choose that, you're going to live with it. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 and then, then, you show, then you show that if that square the L2 oh. is finite, then, then you're done. Yes. Yeah. It can be for any such measure. Yes. OK, I just would have thought that you're going to choose that mu cleverly, but no. OK. No. But you have to know that for that there exists such a measure or that it's true for every such measure? Um, no, any such. Any, any such measure, I guess, yes. Well, like Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and is that a stronger statement than? Is that a stronger statement than the uh, the falconer distance problem or not? When you prove that, are they equivalent? I think we eventually prove something stronger, but yeah, it looks like you're getting something better. But I think the, the most difficult part is to prove uh, the statement to show, to show that it has an L two, finite L two norm. Uh, yeah, we'll see later that it, we will need to do some modification. Okay. Um, so this, uh, here we are only interested in the distance about around one, and we, so we can put t to the d minus one here, and then uh, by, so this is uh, by uh, Bochum Hill, he shows that we have an identity.
like this. So usually uh, this t is around one, but when we estimate this integral r, i is usually from one to infinity. If it's not from one to infinity, then the, the rest is very small and we can ignore it. Um, then let's see. This function mu convolves sigma r hat, but sigma is the, again, angular measure of log radius r. This equals to the inverse Fourier transform of mu times um, is sigma r and then take a Fourier transform. So now this becomes a function uh, with Fourier transform supported on the speed. how it is related to free restriction theory. Well, free restriction theory um, asks what can we say about a function with free transform of B? What can we say about the LP norm? Using the free restriction theory, Tom Wolf uh, improved both dimension B equals to 2, and then the other again proves both dimension D greater or equal to 3. Their result says that if the Hausdorff dimension of B is larger than D over 2 plus 1 third, then um, the, the Lebesgue measure of the distance that is positive. And I think they use it um, by linear restriction theory. And also they use this um, Matila integral. Uh, Matila integral is Something, something similar to what's going, uh, what was written here, but for the distance set. Uh, here we choose to write the um, pin distance set version uh, because it's slightly easier to state. And so this goes way before our use formulation. And then um, we have, however, Wolf's result is sharp uh, for for estimating uh, the L2 norm. In the sense that we, there exists a set E of dimension uh, smaller than uh, four thirds, such that this is uh, this is infinite. And now we are going to see this. Um, That's in dimension two, right? 
Yes. So Wolf's result is in dimension two. We're going to see this example. Uh, in particular, this shows that the approach is stronger, like, like you use you losing some information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this example is a train track example. That was uh, part of it is already uh, appeared in the paper by uh, Katz and Tao, and we modify it it's a little bit. So the train track example is. Uh, again, let delta be a very small parameter. Then we have a, six, a set of rectangles of length delta to the one half of the width delta. And then the space in between them is delta to the s. And we have some other. So this object we call it a train track. And then to make an S dimensional set, we, we will need to have multiple train tracks. And the distance between them is uh, delta to the s minus one over two. So, uh, if you, for example, if you think a set E delta as the characteristic of function of this set uh, as the union of those rectangles. And then we consider this mu as characteristic function of our E delta divided by the length measure. Then this mu, we can check this, the, uh, the condition above, like up to delta is satisfied. And why this example gives, um, so we can modify this s when s is smaller than both thirds, and when we calculate this, uh, this L2 integral, it rolls up. The reason is that this L2 integral uh, counts number of triples x, y1, y2, such that x minus y1, the distance <coughs> between them is smaller than delta. When we consider those delta resolution version of the problem. So this L2 integral, if we think about it, it, it counts those triples. Here, if we have an x located on a train track, and then imagine we have y1 and y2, they lie on the same uh, rectangle, then we would have um, the distance between x and y1, and x and y2 is bounded by delta. And assume that they have a distance about one. So this is about one. The, the reason is because okay. the reason is because if we have a ball radius about one, and then we can use a rectangle of length delta to the one half. And with delta on what well, a plate in high dimensions to cover a portion of the arc of length delta to one half. 
and that's why we have this. So uh, the L2 integral counts those triples, and the train track will contribute many triples to it. And this is the reason why when dimension is smaller than uh, four thirds, then we cannot really uh, improve this as the estimate of work. Is the same true in higher dimensions for the other result? That's a very good question. I was waiting for someone to ask it. <laughs> uh, no. So for higher dimensions, we can still improve. Uh, we can still improve this result uh, using the coupling. Then in higher dimension, there is um, joint work with uh, do. And uh, O Wilson and John. So this is in uh, we, we did it in dimension three, and then later Du and John they have their uh, paper on showing your maximal. As a consequence, they they did it in all higher dimensions. What our result is, I think, dimension of E larger than D square over 2D minus 1. Two, let me see it's 2D minus 1. Yeah, 2D yeah. minus 1. And so we can still improve this L2 bound in high dimensions using the coupling. Um, but in two dimensions, uh, we need to do something on this Cauchy Schwartz. What are you aiming for? Are you aiming to get down closer to uh, one in dimension two, or to or just to improve the four thirds? Uh, so we improve the four thirds using through analysis method, and okay. there, I think uh, Alex Josevich also provided an almost counter example to further improve it. I didn't. Uh, here's the last day. A counterexample for what? Uh, uh, almost counterexample to further improve our result. Uh -huh. okay. You mean following these methods? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, to still believe the conjecture is true. Yeah. Okay. But to be clear, is that what you explain? Are you going to explain us the proof? Is that is that what this talks about? Okay. Yeah. You'll see what your exponent is. Yeah, I'm going to see which part we erase. So this is related to the, this maximal uh, theorem for, for Schrodinger, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, the reason is that um, it's a good point here. So the reason is that for one single x, this is usually not true. But what can we make it true is we can integral on x. And do everything integrate on x. And then here it becomes estimating uh, if we integrate everything on x, this becomes estimating the L2 norm of a function on the fractal set, the mu. So this is our question. Mm -hmm. 
uh, if we manage to estimate the L2 norm on the fractal set, then we will be able to bump this and give a, and hopefully bump the L2 norm for a typical X. And the, the, the fact that this is a fractal set is related to the Schrodinger maximum function. So now, um, our result is um, so let's uh, go. Yosemish and all we did for dimension d equals to 2. And then with all uh, others, we did it for um, d greater than to uh, even integers. And so the theorem says that if d is even, And then the positive dimension of d is larger than d over 2 plus a quarter implies positive measure of the distance set. Um, now let's uh, first focus on d equals to 2. So for three, you're going to get something different. I mean, uh, for three, I think so far it's still the result above is the you can't, best. You, you, and then, but there's no counterexample, right? You can't. The, the no, we don't. We didn't find a counterexample yeah. yet. So let, let's see how can we uh, possible possibly to uh, improve Wolf's result. So if we see the train track example, you will see that all the like bad cases happens on the train track. But there are still other things on the right hand side. For example, if we consider those Z1 and Z2, they, they also they might also lie on the same uh, rectangle. But here x minus z1, the distance between x and z1, and the distance between x and z2, uh, it's very likely that, that they are much larger than delta, when x is not in the same chain chart as z1 and z2. So, um, the, when we observe this, uh, when we think about this example, we see that for most of the distances, like those uh, between x and z, um, the number of pairs x, z, one, z, two, such that they have roughly the same distance is relatively small. So if we can sort of exclude those distances from our consideration, exclude the distance between x and the other points y in the same train track, then maybe we can improve the uh, the L2 bound. So so our goal our goal is to improve this Cauchy short. To do so, we um, define um, a good pair, y and x, we say that this is good. If for any for any rectangle T through 
both y and x. Mu t is smaller than the volume of t. Imagine uh, x and y has distance around 1. Then this says that for any tube through both of them, it occupies um, it's, it occupies below average the, the, the mu mass. So this is indeed t equals to 2. Because let's say T is a rectangle of radius uh, of width rho and of length 1, then this says that mu T should be smaller than uh, rho. Here this means uh, up to some absolute power. So what we actually define is it is smaller than rho to the 1 minus absolute. And we define a pair y and x that is good if this happens for all possible tubes for both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, this excludes the train track because uh, for, we can for this uh, yellow tube through x and y, it occupies more than average mu mass. How do we know we have enough good pairs? Uh, in the train track example, it is true that we have enough uh, by looking at this example. But in general, for any set, how do we know that? <coughs> has large enough mass. In other words, um, can this type of example happen? For example, can our set E be uh, consist of only one train track? Or in other words, why can Now we need to apply Optimus radio projection theorem. The Optimus theorem says that if the distance between this support of two measures is about is larger than one, and also the dimension is the 
dimension of those the sum is larger than the sum of the dimensions is larger than two times d minus one. Then For a typical y, this is a general statement independent of everything else you're talking about, right? Yes. projection of mu two is uh, absolutely continuous on the so on the unit circle uh, on the unit sphere. So the radio projection is defined as um, pi y x defined as x minus y divided by the unknown. And this is defined for any x not equal to So this is a general theorem about radio projection. And then uh, if we try to plug in when d equals to 2. So uh, so when, uh, uh, let me make sure I understand the statement of the theorem. So you have two measures, OK, and, and the distance, the dimensions have to add up to. Uh, but now where's the other measure? Oh, I see. There's the other measure. You got, you got two there. Okay, thanks. Uh, so when d equals to two in two dimensions, our set E has dimension uh, strictly larger than one. So here, uh, imagine we have a set of dimensions strictly larger than one that looks like this. Um, then we can say this is E1 and E2. And also imagine this delta goes to um, goes to zero. So it's uh, like a good approximation of a set of a fractal set E. Then uh, as we can see that the, the radio projection all lies in a very small arc of length delta to the one half. But this should be in, this is impossible using um, using Altman's theorem. Um, Altman's theorem says that um, we have a y and then we have some set the support of mu two. Then we do radio projection and then Projects to this. Uh, what's P? Oh, right, sorry, I just forgot. Right, so P is there exists P anything between one and two. Right, that, thank you very much for your question. Right, sorry, I forgot about it. Then for any P between one and two, the the we when we map this mu two to the sphere via radio uh, pro via radio projection, then it should be like at least absolutely continuous with respect to the leg measure. Uh, it's an LP mass. So that's why it cannot concentrate only on the single uh, small arc of length delta to one half. This is not going to happen.
and then so we using the same um, argument, we can show that um, when here when we give us some room to to define a t, so let's say this is smaller than t to the one minus epsilon, then. For any y, um, the set of x that possibly lie in the bad tube, the union of them has a very small angle. So, and using all this lemma, we can show that the radio, the um, the set E cannot possibly all lie in those uh, small angles, within those small angles. So, in the end, we can show that the, the number of good pairs is uh, sufficient. Is this a hard theorem? Or this? Uh, this theorem, it's, I, it's not long, but I find it hard to, to understand. It's only like two or three pages. But every time when I read it and try to redo it myself, I get stuck somewhere. I, the proof uses free analysis. It's not very straightforward. That's my understanding. Yeah. It's what? It's not very straightforward. It's, yeah. yeah, kind of that. to only the good pairs and consider the distance between the good pairs. When you apply this, uh, you don't know where what P is. It's just somewhere. So the worst case for you is when P gets close to one. two or one? Uh, the worst case is when P is closer to one. Yeah. And so you have to take you just have to deal with the worst case. He doesn't give you any more information on P. No, but if uh, so here <coughs> Um, so there is one thing up here. When we define a good pair, say we start with for any t through, we start with troops of size smaller than some delta naught, and this delta naught we get to choose depending on this p and also this constant, so that we can make this those bad tubes small enough. And so that when we apply it, we, we get an estimate. So uh, that are not uh, absolutely very small constant depending on the on p that, that constant. This, this theorem uh, is a bit, uh, he proves there exists a P. Is he averaging on P? How does he get that he doesn't know more information about the P? Um, um, oh, sorry, the P depends on uh, those parameters, the, oh. the, the dimensions. I, I think the P is uh, explicit. It, it can be made explicit. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the dependence is not complicated. It's like very... Okay, yeah. it depends just on the individual dimensions. Okay, that makes much more sense. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. I should have explained it. So I see. So when you get to your four thirds, it's because you have to, uh, you don't have the dimension of mu one and mu two. You have to take the worst case, so to speak. Uh, both the dimension of mu one and mu two is S. So. And then the P is this explicit function of that. Then. Yeah. 
And that eventually, okay. So the four thirds is definitely a, a natural number coming out of this. Not the four thirds, the five fourths. Uh, five fourths. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Wait, I, I don't think it has to do with the p, like any p bigger than one will be Yeah, it, it does not matter. Like p, p didn't end up playing a role in this, right? Uh, so p only influenced the delta naught, but the delta naught will become a constant. I see, I see, I see, okay. Just want to make sure there isn't a trivial way to improve five over four by just saying boom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no one. Yeah. So now uh, we now we consider only the uh, good pairs and the distance between the good pairs. So for each x. Define new uh, define E as a subset as uh, the set of Y such that Y X is a, is good. Now we redo our previous analysis, just recall it. So this is by opponent radio projections. What we did before is show that there are, there are enough good pairs. And then this is what, uh, so we def, so we now by restrict only on E X. So define, say define mu one X, a mu X as mu restricted of the x. And then, the, so by doing this uh, restricted integral, we consider only the good pairs, and the rest we do as before. So we uh, split into uh, first the integral on the sphere of radius t, and then integral on t. And when t is around 1, so we can add t to the b minus 1 here. Uh, not yet. Um, so, and then we bound by the pin distance between x and the set e x. Uh, this is a cauchy schwarz step.
So here we do our Cauchy Schwartz. And previously we have some loss on this Cauchy Schwartz step. But hopefully, if we restrict to only the good pairs, we won't have such a big loss here. And at least it's, now it's possible that we can improve this. Like we have removed the, uh, the counter examples coming from the train track. And now, Now, how to estimate this? Uh, again, we can use uh, Liu's inequality and change it to be um, the Fourier side. And then we have R to the D minus 1 here. This is by using Liu's inequality. Yeah, that was. Yeah, you mentioned that inequality earlier. It, it, uh, I see. Yeah. Is it inequality or an identity? Oh, sorry, identity. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, when when this uh, when this is no no longer a um, like sphere measure, but other complex uh, convex uh, surfaces, this will become an inequality. But for for you, uh, for the sphere, it's identity. Um, then we have an estimate here. Uh, so now what we have done is, is shows that it's possible to in, to give an uh, L two bound. But how how do we actually do it? So here, uh, let us consider this. So F as a new combo, so new check D, the inverse Fourier transform here, and then this sigma R, then take the Fourier transform. Uh, there is no X here, and we will see how it relates to mu X later. So now this capital F, by definition, uh, is a function whose Fourier transform is supported on a sphere, and we have web packet decomposition. That's a standard tool in, in this uh, Fourier restriction theory. And each the web packet Ft, then first of all, T is uh, a tube of radius r to the minus a half, and length 1. Then F T, when we take absolute value, is roughly uh, the a constant only depending on T and also F, of course, but it's like a constant times the characteristic function of T. And we also have the L2 orthogonality. Um, these two are the properties of wave packet decomposition, and we are going to use those wave packet to study uh, the LP norm or L2 norm of F of the fractal. the refined decoupling theorem. Which says that 
for p equal to 2 times d plus 1 over d minus 1, we can bump the L2 norm of p on x. So x is union of r to the minus a half cubes. Uh, for example, we can think x as the r to the minus a half neighborhood of our fractal set P. So this would be a good toy case. And then uh, the, the refined decoupling theorem says that the LP norm of F on a union of r to the minus half cubes is bounded by m to the one half minus one over p sum over the LP norm of each row packet. Here m means the number of t through R to the minus a half cubes in X. Uh, we can also take M to be like the maximum, but after some pigeonholing, we can assume that each cube in X has roughly the same number of T passing through it. Uh, so this is the this is the refined decoupling theorem. And as we mentioned about the property of each ft is the weight times the characteristic function. So it's relatively easy to estimate this LP norm using the L2 norm. And we also know that the, we have L2 orthogonality. So overall, the right-hand side is relatively easy to understand uh, compared to like LP norm or fractal set. If we assume that CT, the, the, the constant, say, it are roughly the same, then here we can um, pass from little lp sum to little l2 sum, and also this lp to l2. Anyhow, the, if we assume this, then the right hand side will be something depend on the number of rectangles. As a factor, has a factor of m over the number of rectangles or number of tubes. We'll see how, um, in our case, we can uh, get a good estimate about the factor. So, we, we have discussed um, how we use Altman's theorem to pass into only considering good uh, pairs. Now we are going to see how we use it. Hey, how are you? Uh going to uh, go much longer and uh, you know the, the the clock is, is <laughs> the clock is not going <laughs> i see i was i was watching it and i was super confused i guess yes. it seems it seems that i take a super long time but no the clock is stuck so <laughs> you are 10 minutes extra time actually ah <laughs> sorry uh i'm really sorry i didn't realize no problem <laughs> Uh, okay, so you mean I have 10 minutes extra time or I'm, I'm, no, I'm 10 minutes over? over. You are 10, over. 12 minutes over. <laughs> 12 minutes. Oh, okay, <laughs> why not I will stop here? Okay, no, I, I didn't want to completely interrupt you. I mean, maybe uh, if you want to say uh, a few more words, that's, uh, that's Okay, fine. so yes. sorry for that. <laughs> no problem. And, and then, uh, so here is, uh, so then we, um, 
then this is roughly sum over only the good rectangles. function. So if we consider only the good rectangles, then uh, we have a set. And a good rectangle will contain uh, very few of those cubes. So that's why for a typical cube, there will be uh, very few rectangles to it, compared to the total number of cubes. And that's how we did. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. So what is, what is special of the even dimension? So where are you actually using the fact that you are in even dimension? <laughs> that was so, uh, okay. So the, uh, but even dimension, this is because um, when we try to uh, improve, when we try to work on high dimension, we will see that opponents um, theorem requires something like dimension of E is larger than D minus one. But this is not actually the interesting dimension we are at. Ah, okay. So at at beginning we thought in high dimension we cannot apply Oppen's theorem, but then we realized we can um, project to a subspace V of dimension D over two plus one. And then, because our, our interest in dimension of E is roughly, is larger than D over two, but smaller than D over two z plus a third. Because if it's larger than a third, then we already know what happens. And then, it, so we project to this uh, subspace by Marshall's projection theorem, there exists a subspace such that the projection image has the same dimension as E. And we apply openness theorem on the subspace. And then... Ah, so the even dimension is because you need the subspace, the subspace of... Yeah, so when, when D over 2 is an integer, this gives us a better estimate. Uh -huh. okay. When it's odd, then we will not... And you said that uh, um, the, the 5 over 4 is somehow a natural boundary because somebody has a moral counterexample? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. In other words, uh, I mean, 4 over 3 stood for many, many years, and now maybe 5 over 4 will stand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. But you still expect the development of conjecture to be. Right? Yeah, I still hope so. I didn't expect so. But it seems hard to further improve it using the Fourier analysis method. Okay, so there are no other questions. Thanks.